Hey guys, I've made several attempts at this video, so let's try it again. This is my 1959 Kingswood wagon. Uh, we call it Matilda. Like I've said in some of my other videos, I never was real big on naming cars because I feel like once you name them, you've kind of attached yourself to it. But uh, anyway, it kind of helps y'all follow along and I guess it doesn't hurt anything. So anyways, we'll call this one Matilda. Um, I drove this car to work today, which is again, a 120 mile round trip. Um, I had some trouble out of the gas gauge. I think maybe we might've burned it up doing some welding on the car. We didn't unhook the battery. Uh, I didn't think about it. Tim didn't think about it. I was in a hurry. Uh, so anyway, all that aside, I put it, I put two more gas gauges in it. I'll save y'all the long, uh, story on that. But anyway, I think I might, I might've got it fixed. It didn't move much today, driving the car 120 miles. So I'm going to own that out and probably drain all the gas out of the tank, see where I'm at with it. I'm about sick and tired of playing with these gauges. Um, uh, I'm going to, again, just check it, make sure it's maybe the sending unit's bad as well. It may have not have just hurt the gauge. It might've hurt the sending unit, but I'm sitting on three quarters of a tank. Um, I'm not sure how big that tank is. So again, I'm going to drain all that gas out. Maybe it's right. It could be. If it is, I'll just leave it alone. If not, I'm about to spend some money on some gauges. But uh, anyway, kind of what I wanted to get at with this video, maybe some of y'all might have seen the video of uh, Tim Dixon's new 1959 Kingswood wagon. It's just like this car. I love it. Uh, I love this car. Uh, kind of a backstory on this one. Um, you know, most of y'all know that Tim Dixon built this car. Um, I seen it behind his garage, um, just kind of up there doing this, that, and the other. And I, I seen the car, and I thought, man, I just love that damn car. I, I don't know what it was. Kind of like that pretty girl in high school. You know, you seen her, and you kind of chased after her, but, you know, she didn't want nothing to do with you kind of how this car was i could not get it bought i wanted to buy it i made offers she didn't want to sell it you know going to keep it yada 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 well i had just a little too much alcohol one night um and i called tim and we talked about this that and the other and i finally said hey call that lady tell her this is what i'm gonna give her for that car and that's it and uh woke up the next day and uh, tim had texted me and told me i bought it so uh I might have I might have overpaid. That's okay if I did. I don't care. I wanted the car and and I've I own it now. So it's it is what it is. Uh, I don't think I overpaid simply because when I when I started seeing this car, I started kind of looking around for one, and I couldn't really find one that done it for me like this one. Uh, I just really liked the look of this car. I don't know if it's the amber headlights. I don't know if it was just the paint, the way it set, the wheels. Who knows? But something about the car just done it for me at the time. Um, Maybe it's because it seemed neglected. I don't know. But anyway, I just really wanted it. So I started looking for another one because I couldn't buy this one. And, uh, you know, it was either a $15,000 rusty body uh, that still had the drum brakes, uh, no motor, no transmission, rusty floors, or a seventy to $100,000 uh, rotisserie restored car. Or, you know, sometimes you'd run into somebody's project they were right in the middle of for... 20 to 25,000 or something, maybe 30 that they had, you know, blowed apart and, you know, blasted it, done the metal work and just quit. Uh, and I can't stand finishing someone else's project. That drives me crazy. Um, I guess I just don't have the brain for it. But anyway, uh, what I'm trying to get at with this whole video is to me, perfection is boring. I hate for. Let me take that back. I don't hate perfection. It just doesn't really interest me. Uh, the cars, they lose their whole story. You know, you have Tim's car, which is just like this one. It's the same color. It's a 59, but the patina is different. You know, the roof uh, on top of the fins is rusty. His hood has more paint than mine, but his hood only has paint on one side. Uh, you could take this one and his to a cruise in or the rod run or something and people are going to look at them you know maybe they don't think as deep as i do but uh you know like tim's car you know why did it patina the way it did i don't know you can make up a thousand things in your head no one will ever probably know just like this car i don't know the backstory on this car but uh, <clears throat> you can just kind of look at it um again and just kind of you know 
make up your own story. It's got an old trailer light uh, plug-in. Who knows where this old car's been? You know, it's got a, I've been inside Graceland sticker here. It's got some little stickers here from different states, but all those were put on the car. They were made to look old. Uh, so who knows where the car's been? You know, they obviously pulled a trailer with it. So, you know, maybe the car's been to, uh, you know, Yellowstone or uh, the Grand Canyon or, you know, who knows? Who knows where all this car's been? Um, that's what I like about this old patina stuff. Kind of like this old GMC truck, that old 64 Oldsmobile I got. The patina kind of tells a story. You know, even if you don't have a story behind the car, the patina will kind of tell you just a little, it'll give you a little hint of the story. You know, what's happened, where it's been, how the car was, you know, kind of neglected over the years, whatever. Um, that's what I enjoy about patina. And again, it's interesting and it's unique. It's its own car. Like I said earlier, Tim's the one he just bought. It's a whole lot like this car, but it's its own unique car. Uh, now, if we rotisserie restored this one and Tim Dixon's, what have you got? You got 259 Kingswood wagon sitting there, just alike. Uh, but his is a little different than mine. Mine's a little different than his, whatever. They tell their own story. That's what I like about Patina. Uh, of course, this old GMC truck, I've done a video on it before. Who knows where that truck's been, what it's done. Uh, the work days that old truck put in, if some of y'all watched my older videos, it's got a three quarter ton rear end. It's a half ton truck. Somebody's put that old rear end in it. I know that truck uh, belonged to a brick company, brick company or brick layers or something. So the old truck's put in some work in its time. That's probably why it's got a three quarter ton rear end. I'd love to know every bit of the history on the truck. I never will, but uh, they're fun. You know, that's, that's, that's what I get out of them. You know, a lot of people see this stuff, my dad, he never was into stuff like this. You know, he he has to have things right. They got to be perfect. He loves clean, slick paint. And I do too. Again, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to get down on that. I love to see one of these old cars that's got that kind of love and that kind of money and stuff thrown at it. But uh, this is just where I'm at. I love this old stuff. Like I said earlier, I drove this car to work today. Uh where i work i won't really get into big detail but i can't be around my vehicle i guess you know a lot of people can't really be around their vehicle but anyway i've got to go into a uh kind of a protected area and i, I can't have a phone i can't be outside i can't be watching over my car you know and if this car was a you know big money restored vehicle i'd be worried to death about it sitting in the parking lot but this one don't really care you know if somebody dings it with a door i probably be a little upset, but I will get over it, uh, and we can fix it. You know, it's it's no big deal. But uh, anyway, that's just where I'm at on it. Again, kind of like that old uh, 64 Oldsmobile there. You can see it kind of sitting back there. Uh, still got a lot to do. That old car, got to get the trim put back on it. Um, got to get the brakes on it. Got to get the fuel system going through. But again, that old car kind of tells a story. I just love this old stuff. I love it. Um, I don't know really when I decided that, you know, this patina stuff was just for me, you know, again, it, I remember when I first started seeing it, uh, when it kind of first started getting popular, I thought it was kind of silly too, you know, just like a lot of people still do. But anyway, this car, I don't know if this car was sitting at Tim's and it was completely restored. I would have probably looked at it, but it, it wouldn't have grabbed my attention the way that it did. Um, so anyway, here it is. Sorry for the long story. Uh, you know, a lot of people get down on the patina. That's just kind of, I was just trying to kind of explain uh, my stance on it. So uh, this old car this morning, it didn't give a lot of trouble. Again, the gas gauge is... I've got to check it. I'm going to drain the gas out of it. I'm going to own the wire, kind of see where my sending unit's at, where it's reading. Uh, I'm sitting on three quarters of a tank. It's 120 miles to my job and back. So I don't think it's exactly right. So anyway, I'm just going to have to address that. The gauge lights didn't want to work this morning. I don't know what was going on with that. And I tried to blow the horn at one of my police buddies that I seen kind of set up on the side of the road this morning when I was going to work and I knocked 
the uh, little center hole, this the little cross flags. I knocked it out. So uh, I fixed it kind of, I just stuck it in there, but I'm gonna have to take that back loose and kind of glue it in. But uh, I think the car might have thought it was going back to the rod run. I don't know. It was kind of acting a little silly this morning, but it acted just fine on the way home. Uh, done really good. The car don't get hot, runs up and down the road good, drives good. Uh, I'd like to get the dry shaft addressed, get that rubbing gone. You know, the car's kind of up on air shocks right now. I'd like to set that on down, get it lower. Um, and it just rubs a little bit. Tim done a whole lot of fab work back here to fix that, and it still rubs just a hair. So I want to get that fixed, and uh, and then I move on to the interior, get Angie to do the seats, the door panels, and then figure out what we're going to do in the back. I don't think I'm going to put the nine-passenger seat back in the back. Uh, I'll never use it. I wouldn't put a kid back there if he paid me to. So uh, maybe I'll just leave that alone and... Uh, still thinking about ls swapping the car don't know yet it just does so good i hate to fool with it um so i don't know maybe we'll just leave that alone for now address some of the suspension issues and uh make sure i've got the gauges working right i want to get a radio put in the car this car's never had a radio in it since 1959 so i'm going to put a radio in it wire all that up just just get the car where i want it to be and uh you know maybe it'll stick around we'll see Guys, I appreciate you watching. I'm sorry. I kind of get, uh, I kind of start mumbling and trying to find my words, and I apologize. I'm really tired. I've not slept much. Uh, I've got a vacation coming up real soon. I've got to work tomorrow and Saturday and uh, hopefully get Tim's car done. And, uh, again, I'm, I've got a vacation here real soon, so maybe I can kind of refresh myself. Y'all have a good one. I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you on the next one. See you later.